What's up guys, Cass here from Giveaway Studios and on this one I'm going to show you guys how to turn these 54 pieces that you see here into Urbosa's shield, uh, her daybreaker shield more specifically from Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, 54 pieces, 8 of them being 3D printed parts and then different uh, sizes of EVA foam. Alright, let's get it. Um, so with these 10 millimeter pieces. If you guys notice these edges here, if you buy the kit, these are gonna come uh, laser cut, which means that this edge is pretty much just as rough and unglueable as the back of the piece itself. So what you're gonna do is grab some sandpaper, you can use a standing stick, you can use a Dremel, you can use a belt sander, and what you're gonna do is just sand down these edges until you get the fuzz of the foam popping back up. So I'm gonna grab two of these and put them side by side. So I don't know if you guys can tell, see how I kind of fuzz this up here, but this is still kind of glossy and uh, just kind of like burnt over. So you want this on all of the edges that you're going to glue, even these little small ones here, all right? So do that to all four of your pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this process and I'll catch you guys for the next step. onto uh, these discs. And what we're gonna do with these guys is something like this. You see how this is like a nice little domed shape, right? This came from this flat piece, okay? So I'm gonna do one along with you guys. So what we're gonna do is grab our heat gun, heat up the surface on both sides, okay? About like 10 seconds on each side should be more than enough with the heat gun on high, all right? And then just with your fingers, you're just gonna go ahead and push into the middle and stretch out on the edges. You're basically creating like a little dome. If you have something that's circular that you can just kind of like rotate the foam on uh, already, uh, that can be super helpful. Uh, like the top of a, a light bulb or something. Just, you know, not So we have something like this and with these uh, we're going to stick these and these holes once we're ready uh, these will be one of the last things that we put in because we want to paint these separately uh, so that we don't have to end up masking them or anything like that so slide it into position try to make it as flush with uh, the outer edge here as possible and that's pretty much how these are going to be used. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through uh, doing this to all eight of them, and I'll catch you guys for the next step. All right, so with those out of the way, we're gonna move on to probably the trickiest part of this entire build. So you guys have these shapes here, and you'll notice that on the back side, uh, there are these lines that go through the middle. What you're gonna to want to do is create some bevel cuts or valley cuts in the middle of them. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do this in a minute. Um, but once you do, you're able to put some glue on the inside and fold them onto those things, fold it onto themselves basically, so we can have this nice three-dimensional uh, organic shape on the outside, all right? So we're going to go from this to this, okay? So we're gonna grab a fresh blade Because you want to make sure that your blade does not drag during this process. If, you're, if you feel your blade starts to drag or scratch up a little bit, change it, okay? Because you will mess up the piece um, if that's not the case. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead like towards the base here, plunge the tip of your blade all the way through, and I'm going to make a mark right where the blade meets the foam, right? So now you see this line, you're gonna half that line. So from the tip to here is about, this is the halfway point, right? So I'm gonna color all the rest of this. Now if I pass this blue, if I begin to pass this blue, I'm going too deep. So that's a good way to know, uh, not to know, but really to make sure that you're not cutting on the other side of the foam. Because as we do this process, you really wanna cut 
only halfway through. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my lines straight down the middle uh, of these trench lines, these laser cut uh, trench lines. Obviously, if you guys uh, bought the pattern for this instead, um, you will have to put these lines down yourself, uh, which, is, which shouldn't be too difficult. You just transfer all of the information over to your foam. Okay. All right, so now that I have my middle cut, um, another thing that can make it a little easier for you guys, if you grab a Sharpie and put um, a line on the left or right, it doesn't matter which, which side you, you start on, just do it one side at a time. So I'm gonna start on this, I believe this is my left side. So I'm just gonna do a nice regular thickness Sharpie line on one side. And I'm gonna grab my blade, but now instead of cutting straight, I'm gonna cut at an angle. So not straight, but angle, kind of like a, a 45. And the angle that I'm cutting in is to meet the cut that I just did on the inside here, right? So I'm cutting in order to connect my side cut to my middle cut. I'm just gonna drag that all the way. Okay, just kind of taper that cut there. Um, and every time you're ready to do another one, you can put some more lines down. I'm just going to freestyle this because I've done this before. So right there, and then right there. Um, but it's good to put those Sharpie lines, especially if you've never done this before, because uh, they're super helpful and they're going to help make sure that um, the cuts that you do on either side of that center line are even with each other, because if they become uneven, uh, the part is not going to look as good on the surface when we close it all up. Okay. All right. So I did good. Okay. I didn't cut on the other side of my piece, which is great. And now I'm just going to bend these back and I'm going to take out uh, the triangular chunks that are left from these trenches. So there we go. So now, when we glue this right, to itself, it's going to give us this really nice bevel on the outside. Okay. We're going to do the same thing for these guys, but these are a lot easier. It's just a straight cut, so we're going to cut straight down the middle, halfway through. We're going to cut sideways towards the middle, halfway through. We're going to cut the other side towards the middle, halfway through, and then fold and remove the middle trench that we just created. Alrighty, and then when these fold, they're gonna have a nice detail on the outside as well. All right. And so another thing that you guys are gonna wanna do is bevel these edges, okay? So you see how I have a straight edge here, but if you look at this one, see why I have it like at an angle? So it's the same concept. We're just using our blade to kind of cut inside here at an angle. This is going to be super helpful, although not absolutely necessary, but it will be super helpful later on when we're gluing these pieces together. Uh, so a quick demo on how I would do that on this leaf piece right here. So I would grab my, uh, my knife, put it at an angle, start cutting this leaf piece at that angle, right? Following the edge, continuing the cut all the way through on the other side, right? And now I have a nice beveled edge as opposed to the straight edge, okay? You're gonna do that on all sides. I'm gonna fast forward through the process for all these things.
just like we did for the circles earlier, these guys, we're gonna give these a little bit of a curve. Kind of like folding them onto each other basically. And you can give it a little bit of a tug, but only on the edge, right? Be careful not to pull apart these pieces because the spine is pretty uh, sensitive okay, at this point. Right. So we're going to go from flat piece like that to a more curved piece. Okay, we're gonna do that for all of these guys and then I'm gonna catch you guys on the next step. This is exactly what you don't want to do, um, is pull these apart too hard. Just be careful. Put my groups together on one side and then now we're gonna go ahead and add some contact cement to the middle of our seams here and we're going to close them up. you might notice that you're kind of losing the overall round shape on the outside not to worry um, you'll always be able to just kind of reshape it and uh, force it to take the exact position that you want when you're gluing it down um, into its final position okay so that's that now we're going to go ahead and glue all of our pieces together just make sure that they match up so you have you know, a left and a right um, both pieces. So as long as they are symmetrical and they line up. So this looks good, but that's not what it's supposed to be. So the little leaves are supposed to connect with each other right here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do one, two, one, two, and then connect the two connected pieces afterwards okay fast forward time all right so now that we have our shield assembled uh, we're gonna go ahead and heat this up and we're gonna start bending it to give it you know a convex shape so that it looks more like a shield uh, and less like a flat piece of foam so we're going to go ahead and heat this all the way up, okay? And uh, once this is completely heated up, we're going to let it cool down for a little bit. After it cools down, you're going to grab some masking tape. Okay? And then where your seam is on this side and on this side, this isn't really necessary all that much because it's going to get covered. You won't see the seam at all but this one will kind of be visible. So you wanna protect this one from opening up by just putting a piece of masking tape on there so that when we start uh, forming this, it doesn't separate and create like an unsightly line that will show up in our paint. And even if it does, there are ways to kind of address that. Okay, so I'm gonna keep heating this up. Okay, 
with our foam nice and heated, I'll go ahead and grab my rounded anvil. Now I have this tool here that makes this a lot easier, but you guys can use like a bowl, uh, uh, a lamp, like the, those lamp shades, like the cheap ones that they sell at Target that have like the, the rounded plastic pieces to them. You can use your elbow, you can use your knee, you can use the back of a two liter soda bottle. Whatever has like a nice rounded shape and basically with the heated foam you're just kind of like pressing it onto the curve and getting the foam to just follow that curve. Alright, start on the outside, work your way on the inside until you have the shape that you desire. You can have this be as curved or as not curved as you want, right? It's a DIY kit. Get in what you wait. You get out what you put in, not in what you put out. That doesn't make sense. All right, so like that, and like this. All right. So as you can tell, I have a little bump now. It's not like this flat piece that I had before. Uh, so I'm going to continue this process uh, just to kind of get it a little bit more raised, and then I will catch you guys for the next step. So once you've gotten a shape that you more or less generally like, you go ahead and take off your masking tape. Okay, and then we're going to grab these uh, four strips and we're going to glue them together. Alright, so while we wait for these to dry and glue them, what we're going to do is the spacing between the circle and the square here. Kind of like guesstimate the trajectory of a circle right within those bounds. So I'm just going to use a sharpening marker to put those lights down. We're going to do that top and bottom. So basically, we're going to uh, carve out an area or dremel down an area or sand down an area um, where we can this long strip of foam and the reason why I do this with uh, my shields and these kits is so oh, that one was weird it's not a there's no square there huh. uh, the reason why I do this is so that there's a, a piece of reinforcing uh, uh, backing that holds the curved shape that you've put so things curving this way right it's gonna tend to want to go back that way but if there's something preventing it from folding back the other way uh, it's more likely to keep the shape that you gave it uh, than if you just left it like this and you know put tabs and grips on the back of it so um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and finish gluing these pieces I'm gonna sand this whole area down and then I'm gonna glue that strip simple, we're going to fast forward through that process and catch you guys for the next step. Alright, and so once you've made it all the way around, what you want to do is just kind of overlap these two pieces right here and then where they kind of meet up, just slice that. Slice that up and that'll be your your closure point. Okay, so right. and closed. Okay. Go ahead and press this down a little bit. And you will notice, right, a visible difference as soon as you pick this up that it's not as floppy as it was without it. Okay. Um, and then later on we'll add another strip in here if I feel like it's necessary um, but if you feel like it's necessary definitely go ahead and just repeat this process and do like one more here maybe something a little wider so that um, let's say you wanted this to be raised a little bit more so go ahead and heat it bump it up and then put that strip down so that it can hold that position okay right now I feel like this is good so we're gonna move on to the next step Okay, so next step we're going to do here is put these pieces down. 
This is on top, this is on top, this is on top, so kind of like a, a tree foil. Um, so this on top, this bottom, this on top, this bottom, this on top, and that's how we're going to glue them. So uh, that being said, we're going to glue the bottom ones first, all right, to their respective lines, and then we're going to do the top ones over them, okay? Pretty simple, barge your edges, force them to meet up with the lines, and that'll be it. So I'm going to fast forward through the process for those. And after we're done with these, uh, same concept, we're going to grab our little other detail pieces and we're going to do these in place, but obviously on top of the ones that we're doing. So yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so... This is what we have so far. So far so good. You can tell how these lines that we did in the middle add like this nice little swooping uh, inner bevel here and then this nice outer bevel here on this piece. All right, so it's just lining everything up, forcing the foam to go a little bit past the lines, not, not right up against it, because uh, you do want to hide uh, the laser cut lines or uh, in the case of you doing a pattern, you don't have to worry about that. All right, so now I'm gonna apply uh, these pieces, at least on this side. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but I gave like a little bit of a soft bevel on this piece. It's a little extra detail that I did there. You don't have to if you don't want to, um, but that's gonna go right here. And like I said, I'm just going to continue uh, with these pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward through the rest of that process. All right, so I'm gonna take my time and show you guys how I do this because it can be a little tricky. So I'm gonna start at the base, all right? Line my stuff up nice and evenly, right up against the line, and I'm gonna press that down, all right? And then basically choose a side to focus on. I'm gonna start on the, the inside of this curve here, okay? and I am pulling the foam towards that line okay. and as it's curving it's going to look like it's out of place it's not you know don't let the foam do anything that you don't want it to do right you make it your xx chromosome canine uh, and keep twisting this around we go over the first piece down here all right now before we we finish this off over here we're gonna do this on this side bring this down okay. all, right. all the way in now that this is in we're gonna finish this piece bringing this up and over that you guys know exactly how to put this and give you a, a few techniques on how to go about it. All right, so I'm gonna finish up the other side. Okay, so before I go ahead and start the other side, I almost forgot about this piece here. So I have this little uh, rounded uh, foam dowel that I'm gonna glue along this border here. Now, if you have the, uh, the patterns, you're gonna have to just dremel something down or maybe make something that's like a triangle instead, uh, completely up to you. If you ordered the kit, this piece will be included. Uh, I forgot this in the beginning of the video, so it's all of the parts that I mentioned plus one. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and glue that down first, and then do the rest of the stuff. something right now. We're going to put these guys on. This is basically a trim. It's going to go here. Okay, so it kind of goes like this. It kind of points towards these little 
one of two ways. You can put it down uh, individually and connect them. What I'm going to do is try to connect all of them first, just like we did with the inside of the shield. And then I'm going to put it all around the edge here. All right, so fast forward through that step and catch you guys up. to complete our assembly for now. Uh, you guys will also receive these little pieces. Now, I personally, I believe that these uh, little designs are sunken into the shield. If you believe otherwise, uh, this is what these are for. You can just glue them into the slots that they belong. And again, just like with these, you can paint these separately, not worry about, you uh, not have to worry about um, getting paint just exactly in these slots, paint them separately, and then just glue them in. You can even glue them in with um, like a crazy glue or what's the other one? Gorilla glue or something like that. All right, so we're all set with this at this point. We're gonna take this to the paint booth, Plasti Dip, and do all sorts of masking so we can get the right colors in the right places. All right. All right, guys, so we are paint booth bound. First thing I'm going to do is grab some masking tape and uh, put that down, uh, sticky side up, and then tape that down to my table. And I'm going to use this to put down all of my little uh, circle pieces so that they don't fly off while I'm painting. up when it sprays out so in order to get a nice fine mist keep the bottle warm all right make sure that when i shake the bottle there's no water droplets on here and i'm gonna go ahead and plastic get this uh with like two or three coats all right so between our coats sorry i have my face mask on so sorry if you guys can't hear me well between our coats, we're going to do, uh, between our final color and the Plasti Dip, right, in between, we're gonna do a coat of uh, paint primer. You can do white or you could do this kind of like light gray. And what that's going to do is allow the colors, the green and the red, to have their maximum brightness. Because if you just paint the red and the green over the black, you're gonna have to do so many coats until you actually get the brilliance of the color. So you want to do a coat of this first, let that dry, um, and then what I'm going to do is do a coat of filler primer after this is dry, and I'm going to focus it on the areas where I want to just kind of fill a little bit. It's in the word, filler primer. Uh, and then I'm going to lightly sand it with like a thousand bit sandpaper just to get some nice smoothness on the shield, try to fill in some of the uh, seams here and all of that. So I'm gonna fast forward through that process and catch you guys for the next step. So you guys are probably wondering at this point, why the toothbrush? So I don't know if you guys can tell, but if you look at this piece that's been toothbrushed, it's nice and shiny, and the piece next to it that hasn't, it's still matte, right? You, with the filler primer, I found that using a toothbrush is super useful to just kind of get like a nice glossy finish to it. Uh, I use a hard bristle brush uh, and then a medium bristle, bristle brush. All right, and you guys can probably tell by the sheen the difference between the two sides. So that's what I'm doing. In the meantime, I've been coating the 3D printed parts with this Krylon 
clear glaze. It's a triple thick, and as you can see, it gives a nice gloss, a nice sheen, like jewel look to the 3D printed part, right? And pretty much fills in the striations. I've done uh, three coats of this on each of the pieces in about uh, 10 to 15 minute intervals. And I'm gonna do probably one more coat to finalize this, all right? Laser Bits Profil Bronze, and what I'm doing is putting a bit of this on top of the cup, All right? Dabbing it, smudging it in there. All right, it's okay if it gets on the outside, but you just really want to fill in this area. Um, I used a wood burner to kind of get this uh, deep uh, deep inset, all right? Because the laser cut part just comes with like the outline of this. Uh, so if you want to do the same thing, you can definitely use a, a fine tip wood burner to just kind of get that same uh, depth. Or you can use the small little pieces that come with your kit and just lay them on top, all right? And so, once I'm done with this, I grab a lightly damp uh, napkin that I have on hand, and I just get rid of the paint on the surface immediately. Okay, leaving the, the stuff inside of that little crevice intact. And it makes it so that only the stuff on the inside of my shape stays gold. And that's what I'm going to do for the rest of this. first you can mask that and then do the green and then do your gold uh, but with having using the airbrush I'm going to use my paint to kind of bring back the gold all right so with our pieces fully painted what I'm gonna do now is start putting in these parts now depending on your uh, paint and how long it was it took me a couple of days to do this um, but depending on how long you've waited you might see some cracking I don't know if you guys can tell some cracking in the paint uh, if you try to bend it if that does happen and uh, it's been a while since you worked on the project just heat it up right and it should work just fine you should be able to uh, puck everything right in without having uh, too much damage to the paint and just relaxing uh, the paint on the surface a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just slide these into place. You can have them sink in a little bit. You can have them be like flush with the surface, uh, but just pretty much organize them. And then we're basically just going to hot glue them into place on the underside. All right. So I'm going to fast forward through that process. Catch you guys for the next one. that out of the way here comes the final piece de resistance which is going to be your gems so go ahead and slide those in there in position and then part So we're going 
reinforce these with hot glue in the back uh, if they don't fit the super tight or you don't think they're in there tight enough. Probably add some reinforcement, although I'm not going to cover it in the tutorial. But just know that that's something that you guys have the option to do if you so choose. Inside here, there's a number of different things that you can do. Like this shield here that I made, which is the the traveler's shield. Uh, you can do something where you just do two stems of foam with one going across. And you make one large enough to fit your forearm and the other one just large enough for your hand to fit in. And that's one way that you can hold a shield. Or you can do something more in lines with the Wonder Woman shield uh, that I have the tutorial up for, where here I have an adjustable leather strap with a buckle. Same concept, the first hole is large, the second one is smaller for the hand, and you can hold the shield that way. Uh, it's a pretty simple setup, really. You know, you can use some extra foam and, and uh, put a piece of leather, a piece of cloth, some upholstery fabric, um, whatever you'd like. And this one, very much the same. Just remember that if you are going into the um, textured part of the foam, do make sure to sand down. You can see here that I'd made a couple of mistakes and trying to readjust it, but I always sand it down before I glued it in uh, so that it could have like really good adhesion. And that's kind of how uh, this shield is worn. Um, so yeah, super straightforward. So I'm not really going to cover it in the tutorial. And at the end of the day, it's really going to depend on your personal choice, how you, you plan on attaching it to your cosplay. That's really going to dictate, um, which type of strapping you end up doing for this. So if you guys made it to this point, congratulations. Uh, you have completed your Herbosa Daybreaker Shield. Uh, I hope this one was useful. I hope you guys, um, learn something from it. And if you purchase the kit or the patterns on Etsy, I super appreciate it. Um, or if you just, you know, uh, like the tutorial and think that that's something that you can do on your own, I'm always glad I could help. Uh, but if you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comment section. As usual, I try to get uh, to those as often as possible. So this has been Cast from Giveaway Studios, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.